Welcome to the Pocatello Business Podcast, the only Pocatello podcast focused on providing profits for Pocatello people. If you love our town and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Pocatello Business Podcast with your friend, host, all-around great guy, and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. Welcome back to the Pocatello Business Podcast, another episode joined here today with Corey Wright, White, excuse me, not Wright, uh, Pocatello, Everybody does it. <laughs> Pocatello native, you know, he went to Century, decided not for me, went to Highland, graduated there, <laughs> um, went on to ISU, studied culinary arts there, and now, yep. and now you're the owner of the uh, Sand Trap, Grill, and also part owner of the uh, Pebble Creek, and helping with the food consulting, which why is Pell Creek's food has just gone through the roof being a lot better lately. So well, we try. Corey, say hi to the audience out there and uh, tell us about your hobbies, your, your family and what you like to do here. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for having me, Spencer. And uh, oh. so, as you said, I own uh, the Sand Trap here in town. I have a beautiful wife, Caroline Reams White, who also grew up here in town. We have two little boys, a 10-year-old named Gino and an 8-year-old named Vincent. Um, my biggest hobby is mountain biking. It's pretty close to my heart. I've helped uh, put on a lot of races here in town, helped build a lot of trails, helped get a lot of trails approved. Um, I've been kind of li liaison between the Forest Service and the BLM and the city of Pocatello and the mountain bike community. Um, I'm also the moderator or the admin on the Pocatello Trails Facebook page, which started as a page to kind of get all mountain bikers together to go build trails. And it's turned into a great um, asset for the outdoor community. We have thousands of posts, uh, thousands of great pictures. There's great conversation. People, you know, look for different trails or, or trail conditions or even wildflowers. Um, so that's been kind of cool to watch. And then, you know, besides running the sand trap um, and mountain biking, I do like to ski and spend time in Pebble Creek and help however I need to up there um, and just enjoy Pocatello and our surrounding areas. I like it. So you, be, you being a mountain biker, can you confirm or, nor, or deny that you may be working on something at Pebble Creek to try to get some bikes up there? Uh, so that's a long, long process, and our mountain is so steep and rocky. Um, I would deny that that is happening up there anytime soon. Sure. The biggest thing is our lifts are not detachable, um, and oh. so you have to slow them down so much to be able to put a mountain bike on there. You'd be looking at like a 25-minute uh, chair ride. Oh, wow. So that's really been the biggest deciding factor to not put the infrastructure in because you would have such a long trail um, chairlift ride. So unless somebody wants to give us $4 million to um, put a new lift in, there won't be any biking anytime soon, unfortunately. <laughs> well, dang it. Got to be some grants out there, maybe. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. So Corey, I know you've been in the you you've been a, a chef. You've been interested in food for a, since you're 15, I believe. I read somewhere. Yep. And uh, you you've worked in a lot of restaurants here in town until you finally found yourself in ownership of the Sand Trap, right? Yeah. Uh, so I started at Buddy's when I was 15, washing dishes, then quickly moved to cook. Um, my family grew up with the Pipers, the owner of Buddy's, um, so I kind of had a shoe in, and just really loved it. I couldn't imagine myself sitting down and working at a desk or anything um originally i wanted to cook at night so i could ski all day um and which worked for a lot of years and then I really got into mountain biking and it made it lets so i could mountain bike in the morning and then work all night and it kind of was a perfect fit for me awesome your uh, is your family into skiing and all this stuff too yeah they are um my boys are getting pretty good they're not gonna I'm not going to be able to keep up with them for very much longer. And they're um, incredible mountain bikers. It's getting to the point where we can 
kind of go on real rides, which has been really fun. And so we spend a lot of time on the trails together. That's great. That's great. So Corey, what are, what are some of the common myths just in the, in the restaurant industry that you guys have to deal with that people come up with? Uh, well, that it's easy and you make a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's, you know, it's hard work. There's, it's hard figuring out what people are going to order from day to day. As soon as you figure it out, something changes, um, scheduling the right amount of staff for the right amount of peak times is really hard because it changes quite often. Sure. Um, and so that's definitely the hardest myth. So, um, you know, scheduling the right amount of staff to the right amount of peak times is definitely hard. You know, you don't want people standing around, but you don't want people waiting a long time and having bad service or their food taking a long time. So, you know, as soon as we figure that out, um, something changes and we just have to adjust. So that's definitely one of the harder parts of the job. Sure. I'm sure COVID threw a loop in, in your guys' uh, operations as well. It did. Uh, luckily, we were able to stay open for to-goes throughout the duration. Um, the community was really, really supportive. They took care of our waitresses really well through that. Um, and they took care of us well. And it's been really nice since we opened back up. It's been super busy. So that's been really nice um, since we opened back up. And hopefully we can stay open. No, yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's the scary part about all this right now. You never know what decisions are going to get made. And Exactly. Uh, everyone's kind of staying cautious, I, I, I believe, right now. So, right. Well, good. Yeah, I, I'll have to admit, my top two. Your your the trap burger is in my top two to go to burgers. I, I Thank that's you. one of the that's one of the best. And if, and if, if people listening, if you like a little buffalo wing sauce, some blue cheese, you're you gotta order the trap burger. That's my personal favorite. So, yeah, it's definitely one of our uh, better sellers. So. Well, good. So, Corey, what, what's something you you wish you have you wish you have known that you know now when you started in the food industry? Um, that I'd have to work a lot more than I thought I'd have to, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, you know, I love coming to work every day. I love what I do. I love the, getting to see people, my customers, my staff. Um, it's, you know, it's been a learning game once we had kids to be able to spend time with my family and still get enough work done and be here enough. Um, but we figured it out and I spend, you know, four nights a week with them and I work seven days a week here and ride my bike five days a week and it all kind of works out and jives. I like it. I like it. So one, one thing I've always wondered with the, with the, um, restaurant, uh, industries you know me being in the cleaning industry worrying about quality control on my side with my employees and stuff how how do you go about ensuring quality control with with either in either the mills and the service what's your, what's your best uh, your secret sauce to that uh you know our menu it's pretty big but it's pretty basic overall you know people always ask me being a culinary arts trained chef why I'm not doing gourmet meals and fancy um, dinners, which I do for caterings a lot of times or weddings and we'll do something. And then somebody will say, well, why can't I have that at the restaurant? And it's because I want to be able to keep the quality and the consistency the same all the time. And it's a lot harder with some of those meals. Sure. And on the caterings, I do 90% of the cooking and serving. Um, and so I can keep my eye on everything, which has been, you know, I think the key and then keeping pr stuff here pretty basic and straightforward and having a good staff that knows what the expectations are and what we want to put out. Um, you know, there are, we are uh, a grill per se and a bar. We're not trying to be five star. We're just sure. trying to have really good um, home style comfort food. And we just try to keep it um, at the same quality as everybody expects. I like it. You know, I, I'll have to agree. I've, I've always had pretty good, pretty consistent, great food over there at the, at the sand trap. So that's one of my favorite places. So a little off topic now, I got to ask this question. I remember going to sand trap when it was before the old building. Yeah. I mean, before the new building, excuse me. Right. Were you around during that time? 
so I bought in with my old partner right before we decided to build a new building. He needed okay. a partner for the cash flow to be able to build the building. Sure. And I was just finishing up culinary arts school and I wanted to find a liquor license to start um, something similar. Oh, wow. And my, my wife and his wife were teachers next door to each other out in American Falls. Okay. Um, and that kind of got the conversation going and we figured out a way that we could um, it could be beneficial to both of us. And so as soon as I bought in, we started making plans to build the new building, tore down the old one, added uh, catering to the mix and kind of just went from there. Nice. What do you know what percentage of your sales typically got come from catering compared to your, just the people coming into the restaurant? Uh, we're at like 30% of sales for catering. That's good. So pretty, quite a bit, you know, um, but we are definitely still busier at the restaurant. Sure. Well, that's great. You keep building that catering side more and more, I'm guessing, too. So Yeah, exactly. COVID's hurt us this year because, of, you know, sure. the big groups I do, we can't do. But it's been kind of a nice reset, and I've been able to spend a ton of extra time with my family, and so I can't sure. complain. I like that. I like that. Uh, Corey, if you don't mind, I've got to take a quick sponsorship time out real quick. Okay. Uh, Hotel Business Podcast is sponsored by Dale's Outdoor Advertising. Uh, they've been locally owned for the past 60 years. The Kirkman family, quality people in the community. Uh, so if you're looking for billboards out there, people, uh, you want to keep your business at the top of top of, the, of your potential customers' minds, uh, give them a holler at 208-232-6886. Ask for Rob. Again, it's 208-232-6886. Ask for Rob. So Corey, back to you. Um, <laughs> it's a fun, fun little sponsorship break. I've got, to, I get to do. Right. They, they gave me a great billboard right on the South Valley connector as you go, going. Uh, what is it? Uh, west on it. Right. No, I've seen it for sure. So, <laughs> well, perfect. Um, I got one more kind of question, and then we got to go to our lightning round, and then we're we're kind of finishing up here. So, um. I just, I of course, just lost my question, but uh, what, what's the biggest mistake, I guess, uh, that um, you see restauranteurs making? Uh, overstepping, trying to go too big too soon, um, trying to bold, you know, like they're doing something good, so they try to change it and add even more, and so then they maybe, you know, aren't doing what they were doing good at, to begin with as well. Um, or opening up another restaurant. Um, you know, I really think if the whole keep it simple, stupid, um, yeah. and it goes well here, yep. um, you know, don't, um, I know a lot of people that think it's going to be easy and you make a ton of money. And once they start looking at the costs, you know, our profit margins get smaller and smaller every year. It's a fine line between raising your food prices and running your customers out or, keeping your food costs low so you don't have to raise those food prices sure. um there's a lot of variables that there's no way to really pre-plan for it yeah. um you know if you order too much food and you don't sell it it goes bad and then all of a sudden your food costs are way higher than you're planning on um That's so true. you know just kind of, you got to be able to stick to what you're good at and not um get too frustrated if you do fail i like that i like that there you know don't you don't want to be a jack of all trades but you want to you want to be just excellent at those at the few things that you're doing well so yeah i like i like that it's good advice okay well Corey, i don't know if you've oh, watched any of these other, or listened to these other episodes but uh it'll be interesting from your side since you are a restaurant owner but one of the questions i've been asking everyone is what's one of your favorite local restaurants to eat at so when you're not eating at the sand trap you got to bring your wife on a date or something where do you go when you're not at the sand trap uh, we have quite a few, but our go-to is the Sandpiper or Buddies. I live a block away from Buddies, and obviously I've grown up on that food, so oh, yeah. I have a craving for it weekly. That's right. um, but we also try to spread our, you know, we don't go to chains. We go to locally owned restaurants, um, yeah. you know, Senior Iguanas, Jinsen, Sumisu, oh, yeah. El Heredero. Those are, you know, we, we have our favorites. I don't like to cook at home because I'm dealing with food all day long. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> So we do go out to eat quite a bit um, and just, you know, support local. I'm a big fan of supporting local businesses because if we don't support them, they're not going to be around. And right. 
I've been blessed because I have a great customer base. I see a lot of people three to four times a week. Um, and I'm, we're so blessed to be able to do that. So I just try to return the favor to everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. You, you, you have a very loyal following because if, I used to be in real estate, uh, commercial real estate years ago. And, uh, I remember dealing with restaurants that are coming into town or, or out of, uh, in other cities and all they cared about was traffic counts, your demographics, your one, one mile, three mile, five mile demographics. And, uh, and you're over there just you're doing well because you've got loyal people around you and, and, and amazing food. So that's awesome. Thank you. Um, last question. I'll let you get going. I know you're a busy, man. Uh, what's one of your favorite just general businesses to spend your money at here locally? Uh, well, I'm a big fan of Oregon trail bikes lately. They're a new bike oh. shop here in town. And nice. for some reason I keep telling myself I need a new water bottle or a new bike or uh, <laughs> I need my bike fixed. And so I, uh, I'm a big fan of them or uh, Jim Dandy brewing for some reason, their beers taste real good to me. So, and since they're, a block away from each other i can support both of them at the same time <laughs> just you can't you can't carry too much of jim dandy on your bike though so you gotta be exactly <laughs> exactly that's that's why you wanted to buy the different water bottle i guess so exactly <laughs> <laughs> i like it so uh cory if people want to hire you guys for some catering or, or or do some events for for them or, or just have a big group over at your guys' restaurant how what's the best way to get a hold of you so you can call me direct at 208-604-3353 or reach out to us on our website at pokysandtrap.com. We have a contact us link there. Um, and if you just want to book our front party room that's free or make a big uh, reservation, just call the restaurant at 208-232-9850. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show today, Corey. Appreciate it. No, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And I, um, uh, we'll do it again sometime definitely definitely and all those listening go out now go get yourself a trap burger i highly recommend it get some chips and salsa and all other good stuff and uh, we'll see you guys next episode all right appreciate it yeah. congratulations on spending a couple minutes getting just a little bit smarter having some fun and supporting the pocatella business community if you are feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are.